To the people who record themselves crying and then post it to a social media, why? Well I only did it once because I used to have a YouTube channel where I would post videos of my first cockatiel but one day she passed away and I was just telling the people who would watch my videos why I would not be posting and then I broke down and started crying. Oh I'm sorry about your bird friend. What was her name? Her name was Edu and I named her after a Norse goddess. Misread that as cocktail, and then thought you might have had a few already today before I realized that I'm the idiot. So sorry for your loss. It sucks to lose a friend. Glad I found this comment. I made the same mistake. I'm just waiting for someone to answer that the question was actually towards. Not a doctor, but. We're not going to get anyone to directly answer it, just anecdotes. There's a girl from my old HS I still follow and I'm recent years she's gone down a really weird my life is performance art path that revolves around politics and bodily functions. The best way I can describe it is, if the Tuke sub has extremists, she is probably their poster child. And NGL, it's a blast to watch her life crumble. She doesn't work as far as I know, and instead paints and tries to be as edgy as possible on egg. Her account has been suspended a million times because she posts explicit videos of herself lactating in public, smearing period blood on her face, etc. because it's her mission to normalize being a 21st century woman in her words. She doesn't work as far as I know, and instead paints and tries to be as edgy as possible on egg. Her account has been suspended a million times because she posts explicit videos of herself lactating in public, smearing period blood on her face, etc. because it's her mission to normalize being a 21st century woman in her words. Yeah, so she posts videos of herself also crying with random captions like when men stare at me or doctors don't care about cramps. She also posts videos of her armpit hair and brags about defying beauty standards by not showering. Her last video was a rant about how nobody takes her seriously for having PTSD after reacting to the recent abortion laws in Texas. She does not live in Texas. She is Canadian. But her oil paintings are actually really good, so I'll give her credit where credit is due. Edit, no, I don't have internalized misogyny and I think she needs mental services. I think we've all felt one way or another in line with her beliefs, but her actions shouldn't be hailed as healthy or normal. Also, the Tuke sub shouldn't be hailed as the monolith. There are lots of women with different beliefs and that's okay. I'm not sharing her ig, breaks the rules and that's harassment. I just condensed the last 10 plus years of what I've heard through mutual friends and seen on her egg stories. I guess since everybody else is just going to reply with anecdotes and talk about how much better they are than that, I'll bite. I did that once. Why? Like a lot of people suggested, attention. I was 14, I was alone, I was hurting. I wanted someone to tell me I would be okay, and I wasn't getting that IRL. So I went online and recorded myself crying and trying to talk about what was upsetting me. I got a lot of assholes responding, because people seemed so excited to tear down a sad little girl, but I did get kind responses too, and when I felt better I thanked the people who were kind and deleted the video. Sometimes people just need a few nice words, and I don't think they're bad for that. Seriously, people are doing it for attention but that's the point. It's called a cry for help not a quiet thought for help or something. When you replace the idea of attention seeking with connection seeking everything makes a lot more sense. I personally don't do it, but a former friend explained to me why. Yes, it is an attention thing. But ATL East for her, it wasn't in a douchey kind of way, she didn't have the nicest upbringing and was shamed for trying to seek help from her family when it came to emotional hardships. It was a real toughen up kind of household, which made her wary about seeking out help. Instead, she let the help seek her out by drawing attention to her bad emotional state without actually having to tell somebody hey, I feel horrible, I need someone to talk to and be there for me. It's actually really sad and I hate to admit that this is part of the reason she is a former friend. While I felt for her, this behavior took the control away from me. I couldn't tell her that I feel bad myself and she's crossing a boundary by dumping her emotions on me, since she didn't specifically target me. Sometimes I feel bad for that. But in the end I gotta take care of myself, too. Edit, spelling. I've done this in the past. It was because I was really sad and alone and wanted someone to comfort me. I didn't have anyone I could personally reach out to. People are like, why would record yourself crying and post it? That's so attention seeking but then when someone commits suicide it's why didn't they tell anyone they were struggling? 
This is how I understood it. I had a young family member do exactly this and all I could think was, why didn't you tell me, or like five other people in our family that you know you can completely trust? We are incredibly close, and it was rough knowing she wasn't able to talk to me. I hate that this society has made it that being emotionally vulnerable means you're somehow weak. We're not going to kick you out of our tribe, or kill you to eat you. We aren't cavemen. Most people don't make a big spectacle of themselves crying in public, unless they're looking for attention. And all of social media is looking for attention, so that goes 1000 times more there. Obviously there are going to be times when something horrible happens in public which makes you cry on the spot, and of course that's fine, but if you go out of your way to make a scene, out of proportion to the drama, it's a ploy for attention. My cousin did this. He was going through depression and had underlying mental issues he never properly addressed as a child. It wasn't for attention, it was his way of screaming for help. That is for attention. Asking for help, is asking for attention. It's not inherently bad. I don't post anything on social media really, so this doesn't apply to me. In fact, I didn't know posting yourself crying was a thing until this post. However, the other day I was listening to music on YouTube made by someone in her room, and one song started with her crying while some text explained how lonely and depressed she was when writing the song. It stopped me in my tracks. People crying make me very uncomfortable. Maybe it's because I get the I'll give you a reason to cry followed by a smack to the face for crying when I was a kid. Maybe it's because men aren't supposed to cry. I'm sure there are a lot of reasons why crying makes me so uncomfortable. So back to the question. I've never seen someone cry on my social feeds, but I hope it wouldn't make me as angry as all the commenters here seem to get. I'd hope it'd make me stop in my tracks again and feel empathy for the person. Just take a moment to realize how hard life can be. Have you ever watched the Pixar movie Inside Out? Remember, the point of the sadness character was to alert people in the girl's life that she needed support or comforting. Maybe these crying videos are just a modern take on someone reaching out for support or comforting. Also, if it's okay to post videos of yourself laughing or smiling, shouldn't it be the same for crying? Crying isn't a bad thing, so why is everyone acting like it is? I imagine in a healthier society people could express a fuller range of emotions without any stigma. To the people who record themselves crying and then post it to a social media, why? Thank you for listening to another B-Town Reddit Stories episode. Hit the subscribe button and check out our channel for more stories. Let us know your opinion about this topic in the comments.